Where did your interest in Anne Clifford start? Well, I was always interested in women's writing from my undergraduate years, and I ran into Anne Clifford's uh, diary um, when I was working on my master's, and I was really quite interested in it, and interested in women writing of this period, because we always hear Virginia Woolf, you know, she talked about that, there, that Shakespeare's sister <laughs> wouldn't have been able to write, and she would have died in a garret or something. And I um, was surprised to see that there was a, a woman writing in this period. I was also interested in what she had to say about the culture, um, and her trials and tribulations. And so that's when I first got into early modern women uh, writers. And then I worked on them for my PhD, and I just continued. I didn't actually work on Anne Clifford for my PhD, which was, um, I wanted to work her in, but she, I didn't, couldn't quite work her in at the time. Um, and so I've always been, I've always had her in the back of my mind. And when the Great Books of Record came um, up for sale, oh, the, the last set, which was in private hands, came up for sale in 2003, and I saw a notice that the Kendall Archives had bought it. And so they have all three sets now, and I thought, wow, somebody needs to have a look at those. So when I came up to Huddersfield, I, um, I arranged to go have a look, and I thought, whoa, there's a lot more in these books than we are, have been led to believe. A lot of people say that they, they, they talk about them as if they're only a genealogy. And she did actually have genealogies uh, commissioned, um, single volume genealogies, but the great books of record are a lot more than that. In what way? What, what, what makes them uh, so special? I think it's the way in which she um, has collected so many documents from such a long period of time. So she collected documents, the earliest one we have is in the early 1100s, and then the latest document that's copied into the great books actually comes is her granddaughter's um, uh, document, actually her, her great-granddaughter's document from um, 1739. So we have this, all these documents talking about all sorts of aspects of the, the Clifford family from, from this period um, in direct line. And so we get a lot of historical data from that. But also there's things like, um, there's one document I was working on the other day where it talks about how a young girl, a young Clifford daughter was carried when she was six years old to the chapel at Skipton Castle for her wedding. Um, and so there's, and then another, a widow who was asked to, um, uh, to marry, well, no, told to marry by uh, King John, told to marry um, the man that she, he wanted her to marry. And so then, and then of course there's lots to do with um, the, uh, the land and that was passed down throughout the, uh, the generations, uh, their relationship with um, religious houses. And so there's all these documents and they've got the Latin and then, or the Anglo-French, and then it's all translated into English because of course Anne Clifford was, uh, was not very, I, she clearly could understand a little Latin, but not very much, so they were all translated. And I don't think anybody understood the Anglo-French, even the scribes who were writing it, because there's a lot of mess in it. <laughs> but, um, so there's the documents. But then at the end of each section, after she talks about each ancestor, she then summarizes and tells, tells their story in her own words, kind of emphasizing the things that she thinks are important from the documents. So it's, it's kind of a consolidation or a synthesis of, of what the documents are talking about. So that's really interesting in and of its own right. Are they unique? They are unique. I have uh, run across some family chronicles. The, interestingly enough, her um, second husband, uh, Philip Herbert, he um, was given a collection that was done by a, a relative of his, Thomas Herbert, which is now in the Cardiff, uh, the Cardiff Library, which is also a family history. But it's quite messy, and it, it doesn't have the organizational uh, structure, and it's sort of hit and miss. Whereas Anne Clifford, you know, she's, she's got the documents, she has the summary, then she has an index, uh, which is a descriptive index. It's not just, um, it's, this document is on this page, but the descriptions tell us what she wants us to take away from those. And then in the third volume, it's really exciting because she has her, her father's um, voyages. So, you know, his voyages over, um, you know, to the Caribbean and, and his, his seafaring ways, which are really kind of exciting. And then she has her own, um, a summary of her own life, a diary of her own um, life. And then she kept that up um, every year until she died in 17, 1676. So that's really quite interesting as well. And she made sure that um, copies of this summer, yearly summary were placed in all, in, at that time, four sets. There were four sets originally made. So all four sets were kept up to date um, all throughout her life. And she didn't just make them and put them on a shelf, 
but she kept writing in them. So there's lots of like underlining, marginal notes, brackets. Um, you can kind of see the things she's interested in. She's always interested when tenants are behaving badly, or um, she really likes um, beautiful descriptions of uh, what the landscape. Um, and of course, interesting people. And sometimes it's hard to figure out why she thought that person was interesting. Other times you can see, oh, it's because this person um, was not popular with her. And sometimes she retells stories like about her, um, her ancestor, uh, John Clifford, uh, the butcher lord, who killed the Earl of Rutland over in Wakefield. And uh, in Shakespeare, of course, he, he, he ruthlessly kills a child, but in, and Clifford, of course, had to correct Shakespeare and said, no, that uh, the Earl of Rutland was a soldier, 17 years old, it was open battle, and that was just the way it worked. So, yeah, so it's, it's quite a, uh, it's, it's full of all sorts of life uh, from, you know, for almost 600 years, and I think that's what's so exciting about it. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.